Dolphins, porpoises and whales are some of the ocean's most charismatic inhabitants. They're regularly seen at the water's surface as they must come up for air to breathe. But many also simply enjoy leaping and playing in the open air. The largest creatures in the oceans are whales. They are colossal travellers. The largest great whales can be found across the globe, but many were nearly lost during the period of human history known as the whaling era. From the early days of the 1700s to the industrialised whale hunting in the 20th century, whales were caught in their hundreds of thousands, and many populations are only now slowly recovering. One of the last species to be targeted by whalers was the say whale. This streamlined and elegant marine mammal is generally a deep water species and has little curiosity in people or ships. Because of this, it is rarely sighted by humans. Except for in one important corner of the world. The Falkland Islands are a group of islands in the South Atlantic Ocean. And throughout the summer and autumn months, these islands are remarkable for this endangered whale. It is one of the only places where these whales can be regularly seen near the shore. Almost no other people in the world can walk along a coastline and see these whales in such numbers. A key to their lives here lies in the rich seas that surround the islands. The waters are alive with small organisms. These squat lobster krill are vital not just for whales, but the entire ecosystem of the islands. Krill are small crustaceans that often live deep underwater, but this species forms large clouds that can rise up to the ocean's surface. Say whales lunge at these krill and other small marine life, taking in thousands in each enormous gulp. Say whales will also dive to hunt for deeper prey. Whales live a feast or famine life, gorging on krill and small fish during the summer feeding seasons before fasting over the winter months. The Falkland Islands are a popular yearly feeding ground for say whales and a favourite area is Barkley Sound at East Falkland. Here, in this narrow stretch of water, say whales typically travel alone or in small groups. But the whales have a flexible social life, and individuals change their travelling companions regularly. Say whales are present close to the Falklands throughout the summer months and into the autumn and by late June the majority will have left, travelling north to warmer waters for their breeding season. Little is known about the global migration routes of these enormous travellers, but at least some Falkland say whales travel to and from Brazil, a straight line journey of over 3,300 kilometres from Rio de Janeiro to the Falkland Islands. As the say whales are leaving the islands, another whale takes their place in these nearshore waters. The southern right whale. These whales are as long as the say whales, but instantly distinguishable. They are much stockier and more buoyant than their summer counterparts, and they don't have a dorsal fin. The callosities around their heads are areas of rough calcified skin and are colonised by barnacles and whale lice. Each pattern is as unique as your fingerprint. The patterns of scars on their fins and flanks give an insight into their lives, 
hinting at attacks from killer whales or a history of parasites or other ocean dangers. White whales do use Falkland's pelagic waters throughout the summer as feeding grounds and migration routes, but it is throughout the winter when they inhabit the coastal waters and can be seen from the shore. By July and into August, most of the southern white whales in these coastal waters are using the area as a winter hangout, a place to meet and interact with other whales and to enjoy one another's company, something they wouldn't do whilst they're busy feeding over the summer. Some engage in mating behaviour, although this female isn't keen. She's rolling onto her back to avoid her suitor's advances. White whales engage with each other, but also with their environment. Kelp beds provide shelter, anchorage, and a relaxing seaweed massage. Southern white whales are slow and buoyant thanks to their very thick blubber, and will often bob almost motionless at the water's surface. This made them an easy target for early whalers, and they were hunted in enormous numbers. They got their name from being considered the right whale to hunt and to kill. In fact, they were hunted so much that by the 1920s, as few as just 300 individual southern right whales were thought to remain. That's likely less than 5% of the pre-whaling population. Since widespread whale hunting was stopped in the mid-20th century, the southern right whale has shown an incredible recovery. Today, around 7,500 whales are thought to inhabit the Southern Oceans. And whilst this is a small population, it is still an enormous recovery and gives hope to other species that are still in dire situations. These visits of Southern white whales to the Falklands coasts each winter are truly something to be celebrated. It is not yet understood if an apparent increase of wintering right whales here is a re-establishment of ancient traditions or a new behaviour as populations expand. And say whales too are recovering from centuries of persecution, but we can't expect that to continue without our ongoing help and support. Research continues to show how important these waters are for whales and other marine life, and how interconnected places are on a global scale. These mighty giants face dangers from vessel strikes and entanglement in man-made hazards such as fishing equipment, and climate change will likely impact their food supplies. Without understanding them, their lives and their stories, we can't hope to successfully share these waters and to live alongside such incredible neighbours. In the Falkland Islands, a small group of conservationists and researchers are working hard to uncover more about the incredible whales that use these waters. Falklands Conservation have been running small boat surveys for say whales since 2017, piecing together more information on their complex lives. It was initiated because there was a recognition that the number of whales in the Falklands had been increasing over the preceding couple of decades and no one really knew anything about what species these whales were, why they were here and, and why there was this sudden increase in nearshore Falklands waters. Barkley Sound was chosen as the main study site. It is the area with the highest amount of human activity, reflecting the island's busy cruise tourism and fishing industries. Right whales were added to the project in 2019 after higher numbers of animals were seen during the latter part of the say season than were expected. Throughout the year, Caroline conducts surveys in Barkley Sound and the surrounding coastlines, recording any cetacean sightings. The primary tool at her disposal is photo identification. By using a telescope lens and a high-resolution camera, Caroline is building a photo identification database of all of the whales that are encountered on surveys. 
And for the saywells, we're looking for nicks in the trailing edges of the dorsal fin and also the characteristics of scarring on their sides um, and pigmentation patterns sometimes um, on the dorsal fin as well. And for the right whales, we're just looking at the head pattern with the callosities. Falkland study sites have also included Falkland Sound and Queen Charlotte and King George's Bay at West Falkland. Individual say whales have been recited across these sites, showing that a single population is likely using the Falklands and that animals are moving within these related locations. As well as collecting photographs from the whales, Caroline and her volunteers are also on the lookout for another important research opportunity, whale poo. And the purpose for that um, is basically to look at the diet of the whales and to establish what they're eating, which is the driver for why they're in the Falklands at all. Um, and also we can get some genetic material actually from the whales themselves in that faecal material. And the uh, third thing that we look at is um, uh, health. So we sometimes see little bits of worm and uh, parasites from the intestines that are there floating in the sea in this, in this faecal material. Samples are analysed by the British Antarctic Survey in the UK. And whilst detailed research is still ongoing, it is revealing that say whales of the Falklands are mostly eating small crustaceans such as lobster krill and anthropodes. Fecal collection provides some genetic material, but this project is also collecting samples directly from some of the individual whales themselves. We use a tiny little uh, tip on an arrow, um, it's fired at the whales with a crossbow, and uh, it hits the whales and bounces cleanly out, and it brings with it a very tiny little piece of skin and blubber um, that we use for genetic analysis. Uh, this is all done with a research permit from Falkland Island government. Genetic material can tell researchers an awful lot about population structures and genetic diversity within populations. Samples can be compared with those taken at carving grounds, to understand where the Falklands fits in with global migration routes. For right whales in particular, understanding the links between foraging ecology and breeding areas in the Southern Hemisphere has been identified as an area of conservation research priority. The Falklands work is an important piece of this puzzle and is shining a spotlight on a little studied but vital aspect of the lives of these magnificent whales. Of course, it isn't possible to be out on the water 24-7 and small boat surveys can often be impacted by weather and logistics. To find out what the whales are doing, even when they can't be seen, Falklands Conservation have deployed acoustic monitoring devices in Barclay Sound and Falkland Sound. These devices have been recording underwater for six months and will be quickly redeployed after their important data have been downloaded for analysis. And we're recording particularly at the lower frequencies that are used by baleen whales with the aim of uh, detecting the say whales and the southern right whales that we know are here and looking at their seasonal occurrence, but also picking up you know, whatever else might be swimming through the area. So for sure we've recorded killer whales, for example, um, and there may well be other baleen whales. The recordings that we've looked at so far are full of, full of calls, so it's a really good extra source of information on what species of whales are using the site and the time of year that they're here for. And also, the call characteristics of say whales are not well known, so it's going to really improve knowledge of uh, say whale acoustic ecology uh, globally, not just in the islands. As well as improving global knowledge of these two species, this project also has a local ambition. The main thing we've been working um, towards with the say whales was to have the Falkland Islands recognised as a, um, a key biodiversity area, which is an internationally recognised area of importance on a global scale. So we've done quite a lot of work over the last few years collecting the information that's needed for that. Um, so we're really hoping that the, the near shore waters around the Falklands will be recognised as a KBA and that this will then lead on to perhaps um, the introduction of um, a more uh, legislative protected area and the associated management that comes with that. There is still much work to be done to understand more about our enormous neighbours, but it is important that this region is now being recognised as an exceptional site for these whales. 
populations look set to continue to grow and recover from historic whaling, it will be a privilege to see more and more whales in the Falklands and to be working to make these waters as welcoming and as safe an environment as possible.